hey what is going on guys welcome back to another video and in this video we're gonna talk about building a video player with adaptive bitrate so um so in simple terms this is basically building a video player which is smart enough to switch between qualities depending upon the bitrate and the bandwidth availability so as soon as the network kind of becomes congested and your speed drops uh, the video quality will shift to a lower video quality but as soon as the network gets a bit faster and there is less congestion it will switch to a higher quality video right which is which what you use this is this is something which is very common today right uh, even if you open netflix uh, or if you put or if you open youtube and set the video quality to auto depending upon the bandwidth and depending upon the file size uh, it will actually adjust your video quality and give you like a very smooth uh, viewing experience so we'll try to build that today so uh, before we do that i just wanted to talk about a bunch of things so one is hls uh, that is something that we'll be using today and m3u8 so m3u8 is a file format that basically defines a playlist and what i mean by playlist is that all the variants of a particular video quality right so if the video is available in 480p 1440p or uh, say 720p all of these are considered as playlist and um, that m3u8 file will give you the segments for each of these files uh, for each of these qualities and a bunch of other information so we'll take a look at that and we'll also take a look at hls which is the http live streaming uh, protocol that is developed by apple and we'll also uh, see how we can how we can use ffmpeg to create segments of a video and then serve it from a server and then how does a video player uh, switch between switch between these qualities switch between these video qualities right so let me try to illustrate what we'll try to do today so this is what we'll be doing today right so uh, say i have a video file right so i have a video file here and say this is 4k right and you don't want to stream a 4k file because all of your clients will be viewing this video won't have the bandwidth so we'll actually create multiple copies of this particular video but with varying qualities and bitrate right so we'll create one for 480p you'll create one for 720p you'll also create one for 1080p and you might create for 1440p as well right so this depends on you know who is your client what is their network connection and uh, are you okay with that much of data being transferred and because that's gonna be uh, so because that's not gonna come for free so maybe you have to pay a service provider like you know aws or maybe google cloud or whatever right but if you're using cloudflare r2 the egress is completely free I have made a video on Cloudflare. I'll leave a link in the video description. But uh, coming back to this, uh, what we'll essentially do is we'll create copies of this video, but with various qualities, right? Now, next, what we'll do is we'll actually break this 480p into segments, right? Uh, so we'll break it into, say, uh, segments of, uh, so if it is, say, a 10 minute video, um, or in our case, maybe like a minute video. We'll probably break it down into like 10 segments right so there will be segment one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten right similarly we'll do for 720p or 1080p and 1440p right so all of this is statically served this is in your server somewhere or hosted somewhere so now when a client wants to load a video it will request something called as a playlist uh, which is basically all of these qualities encoded in utf8 and served in a M m3u8 format right uh, and the client will be served that particular playlist and the video player will be smart enough to decide which quality to use and it will start requesting these segments for that particular quality right so for example uh, if it chooses 480p right uh, if it chooses 480p it will start requesting segment number zero segment number one and segment number two right because it will start buffering right it wants to create a very smooth experience for the end user as soon as the video loads it will request segment number zero 
as soon as the segment number zero starts playing it will start requesting one and two so it will keep on some buffer before it starts requesting the next one so that you don't have that buffer coming in every time right that's very annoying so it will prefetch uh, kind of prefetch these particular segments now for instance now if the user changes this quality from 480 to 720p right what will essentially happen is from whatever segment you are on right now maybe you're on segment number two it will start downloading segment three of 720p right so say it downloaded these these segments right so three four and five it downloaded for 720p now again your network became became bad right there is a lot of congestion in your network and you know the player understood that hey i cannot uh keep on containing serving 720p files because it is taking too long to download so it will go back to your 480p quality and then your segment 6 7 8 9 whatever the segments the next segments right so it will so it will keep on loading those segments right so this is basically adaptive bitrate so depending upon the buffer depending upon your network congestion it will try to switch between qualities automatically or it will give the user an option to switch between these qualities right so we'll take a look at all of this but this is pictorially what we'll try to do today so now let's take a look at the code and see how does this work cool so here we have a very simple go server so we have installed Jin, uh, which is a, like a simple which is like express for go um, and then we create a simple router uh, you can pretty much ignore this stuff because this is for course for handling course errors we basically say router.static so we serve static files which are from this videos folder. We start it at port 6789 and that's it, right? One thing to note is the videos folder that we are referencing here, right? So if any request come for HLS, uh, it will be redirected to the videos folder, right? Uh, because that's where we are, that's the folder from where we are serving the static assets. So uh, if you look at the videos folder, it gets a bit interesting, right? You'll see that there are a bunch of files uh, with quality uh, followed by a segment and there is a file called 480p.m3u8 so it's quality.m3m3u8 this is something that i was talking about before uh, 480p 720p 1080p and there is one which is master which is master playlist m3u8 right so uh, initially when the video starts when the video player or the user or the client gets on the particular page which, which is requesting a video, will send this playlist.m3u8 file, right? And this is actually a pretty interesting file, right? It, and you'll define a bunch of things here, right? So you'll you'll define that, hey, uh, the stream information. So if the, so uh, resolution 480p, the bandwidth is this much. For 720p, the bandwidth is this much, right? For 1080p, the bandwidth is this much, right? And what is the file that needs to be requested is this, 1080p.m3u8. For 1080p resolution, for 720p, it is 720p.m3u8. For 480p, it is 480p.m3u8, right? Now, uh, this is this is something that the client will request and it will choose one of these qualities and then it will request the corresponding m3u8 file, right? Now, the question is, how did I even generate these quality.m3u8 files and these segments, right? So, this was pretty easy. So, I used ffmpeg and there is a command that we can use so let me just bring that up as well so let me do a reverse search on ffmpeg yeah so this is the command that i used so i pass in the video that i need and then i do a bunch of video filters right and i i'm actually scaling down a video i think the video this test.mp4 is like a, a 4k video i guess so i create multiple qualities of this video uh, right, so I'm creating a 480p quality and I'm saying that, hey, encode it. The codec has to be H264, which is the most commonly used codec. Um, and then I'm giving it a bit rate. Uh, this is basically FPS. Uh, and then for audio, what is the kind of uh, bit rate that I need, right? So AAC is the codec and then the bit rate is 128k. We're doing it for HLS. Uh, HLS time is 5, uh, which is uh, basically the target time. We'll get to that later and hs hls list size right so what is the first segment that you need uh to have right so for example this could be one two so it will start from one or whatever whatever number you give here 
and the HLS segment file name, right? So what the what format should the file name follow? So what I'm going with is the quality underscore uh, the files, the segment, the segment name, uh, which is padded. So it's a three digit number padded with a zero, right? That's why you see 001, 002, 003, 004. Right. And this will also generate the M3 U8 file for that for that specific quality. Now let's take a look at these M3 U8 files, which are there for a specific quality. So let me open the 1080p dot M3 U8. And as you can see, it, this is a bit large, but I think this is pretty much like a simple similar to the M3 U8 playlist dot M3 U8 file. So first is the version of um, of M3 U8. So we are just using three. Uh, the target duration is the max amount of uh, duration that we have here. So I think uh, that is seven uh, somewhere. Um, and then the media sequence. So what is the sequence that we need to start with? So that is zero. And uh, this is it, right? So uh, this is this is the six second video, which is the f segment number zero, 5.0667, which is segment number one, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So these are all the segments that we have here. And, uh, and this is all generated by FFmpeg. I have not used any other tool. This is all generated by FFmpeg, right? So these are all the segments, 00, uh, 000, 001, 002, 003. And the number above that is the segment, is the duration of that particular segment, right? So for example, uh, segment seven, uh, actually segment eight, number eight, but segment num uh, named as 007 is 4.7 seconds long, right? So yeah, so and till and the and the video player will keep on requesting these segments till it hits this, which is extx end list. So which tells the video player that we are done, the video streaming is done, the video is complete. So this is pretty much the M3 U8 files for that particular quality. And you can see this across the same, right? So for here also, there is an M3 U8 for 480p, also there is an M3 U8 file, right? Uh, now this is, this is the backend side. Uh, so we covered the video. Uh, how the file is generated uh, now the the master playlist which is this playlist.m3u8 and now let's take a look at uh, the uh, front end which is in our case just an index.html uh, which i'm just using you which i'm just serving using a live server all uh, right so uh, here uh, nothing fancy we are just using video js um, and we're just loading it over cdn and then we basically request, right? So we are using the video tag element and then we are requesting a file uh, called M. So we are requesting the playlist.m3u8 from the source here, right? And we are giving it an application slash MPEG URL as its type. And this will load that playlist.m3u8, select the source, and then we'll start requesting the chunks. Uh, so here we are just uh, configuring the video player. So we are adding a play toggle, progress control, volume, quality selector, full full screen toggle, etc. So yeah, so and also we are uh, setting the default uh, HTTP source selector to auto. Uh, we'll also take a look at how we can actually configure this, uh, right? Uh, we'll also take a look at how we can serve these files from R2 rather than the server serving it. So this is the front end. Uh, so the front end is pretty minimal. The back end is also not that complicated. Uh, now let's just take a look at the demo, right? How does this even work? So let's just uh, control C. Let me start the server. So go run main.go. Uh, yeah, so our server is all set up. This is my index.html. So let me also try to open the inspect element tool. Now let me try to refresh this page, right? Let's just see what really the front end downloads. So if I refresh, I see that there is a bunch of data that gets downloaded, right? Uh, these are all the JS files. Uh, this is the playlist.m3 with that I was talking about. So it actually uh, downloads as a, it actually downloads it as a, um, as a binary. And here you can see the contents of the file that I was talking about before. So this is the content of the file that, that, that we saw before, right? So ext stream info bandwidth, this much 480p, this much. Uh, you know, 1080p this much, and then uh, 720p this much, right? So this is the file, and depending upon the 
current available bandwidth, it selected 1080p.m3 U8 because, you know, I'm surfing it from the same machine that I'm using this browser on. So yeah, I'm not actually connecting to any server somewhere, right? So it downloaded this 1080p.m3 U8. Uh, this is, this is all the segments that it has, right? Uh, you know, for that 1080p thing, uh, you know, the target duration, the media sequence, which is zero. And this is the first sequence, right? So the six, six, six second sequence and the corresponding uh, segment, which is 00.ts or uh, the five second segment for which the segment is 001.ts. Uh, so it just downloaded the full file. And, and it also kind of downloaded the first segment uh, preemptively because it knew that, hey, uh, the user is probably going to hit on play. So let me just download the uh, zeroth segment, right? Now, if I play, if I hit play, see what really happens right let me also mute the music so let's just look at this bar right it will keep on buffering and as you can see this also keeps on loading right now the ninth segment now the 10th segment right so for the 1080p quality the segments are now being requested right which is pretty cool so if i directly skip to this right so it will load the uh, 17th segment which is the last segment let me try this again let me just hard reload so that there is no disk cache involved uh and then if i play this video and if i directly jump to this right see how it just downloaded so it actually moved from the sixth segment directly to the 12th segment right so it skipped all the segments in between because i because i clicked way too ahead in the video right so this is how uh, this is how it kind of buffers and loads the segments preemptively. Um, and now there is one more interesting thing that I would like to show. So if I empty cache and hard reload again, and if I play this video and if I switch the quality, right, if I go to 480p, right, the video switched, right? So uh, now it loads from for, for 480p. Now if I switch back the quality to 720p, you can see that again, now it's loading the third segment of 720p, the 12th segment, the 13th segment. If I change it to 1080p, now it loaded the fourth and fifth third because that's the segment I was on currently. Right, so it downloaded all the segments for 1080p. This is this is really interesting, right? This is all happening. There is no backend. There is no uh, anything that is dictating this. This is it's doing it. Uh, on its own so it takes a lot of headache off of you so yeah so this is this is actually pretty interesting uh i also wanted to show uh what happens when i change the network settings right so to simulate that there is a network congestion i'm just going to use throttling so let me go to 3g which is extremely slow network uh now now let me remove everything and let me play the video right so uh, it will actually detect that i'm on a low network i'm on 3g so it moved to 480p right automatically it moved to 480p i didn't do anything right i haven't switched the quality here right now uh it will try to load that segment it's downloading that segment you can see here right uh, let it download the full segment and then it will start playing again right i think it's around 1 mb so let's just give it a minute and uh, yeah, I think the zeroth segment. So it started loading the first segment because we are pretty much done with the zeroth segment and let it load. I think this will also be like around one MB. So give it some time. Yeah, now it started playing in 480. Now what happens if I go to a faster network, right? If I go to fast 4G, right? It automatically switched to 720p, right? This is how cool it is, right? This is actually pretty cool, right? Uh, the only thing is if I go to no throttling, it doesn't switch to 1080p. Maybe there is something here uh, that I'm missing, but yeah, I think it preemptively doesn't switch to the highest network because it knows that, hey, maybe I've seen that, you know, the network kind of, kind of go down. So maybe I want to be a bit more cautious, right? So yeah, I think that pretty much covers the video. Like this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you guys feel like I need to try something else, maybe dive a bit more deeper into this, do let me in the comment section below and I can do that. And uh, thank you guys for joining and I'll see you guys in the next one.